All right, now I'm going to show you how to use a <clears throat> knee pad. Um, it's very similar to the elbow pad that we looked at before. The difference is, is that the shape of the padding is a, a little bit different and it's a wider pad, okay? This is more of a rounded off diamond shape for the elbow. The, uh, I mean, for, for the knee, the elbow pad is an oval shape, okay? So if you get confused, again, you can look on the inside of your knee pad and it's got a tag, and the tag will tell you that it's actually a knee pad, and it'll also tell you the size. Okay, this one's a large, and um, this, you usually have to go with bigger sizes on these. Most of the time, they run a little small. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you how to put this knee pad on our athlete. Uh, you would use this if she had a contusion, or some bruising, or if she had a bursa injury, which would cause bursitis. Anything that she potentially will still have some contact and we need to give some extra protection um, over the structures on the anterior knee, this would help. This is a half inch pad. We're gonna put the wording uh, in a proximal, so higher up. So she's gonna, cause this is tapered. So she's just gonna put this on and slide it all the way up. Go ahead. want the knee to hinge right in the center of this pad, okay? So we've got some little bit of padding below over the patella tendon and the tibial tuberosity, and we've got some padding above on the quadricep tendon. Uh, you don't want a lot of space in here. This one actually fits her pretty good. I don't think this is going to slide down too bad. We could look at using a medium and, uh, you know, the size below, but if it's too tight, then you know, they can't move the joint, so then that becomes a problem with them doing their sport because you can play with this uh, on. This is the reason why we put it on so they can continue to play even though they're still injured. And that's it for using knee pads.